Tropical storm Gaston no longer a threat to Dominica, but we could see another tropical depression or storm in the next few days. A Dubai team seeking to tap the skills of volu international volunteers for projects in Dominica. And Miss Dominica spearheads a remembrance concert to mark Tropical Storm Erica's first anniversary. I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details after this. To begin with the weather, the Office of Disaster Management has advised that Tropical Storm Gaston will not likely be a threat to the island. The ODM in a press release said it would inform of any changes related to Tropical Storm Gaston, which is still in the mid-Atlantic region. It was expected to reach hurricane strength by Wednesday and head towards Bermuda before sharply veering off into the North Atlantic and losing strength. The ODM says it will partner with the Dominica Meteorological Service to monitor the storm's movements. It is also watching a weather system which could develop into a tropical depression or storm during the next few days while it moves west-northwesterly at about 15 miles per hour across the northern Leeward Islands near or over Puerto Rico, Hispaniola and the Bahamas. In other news now, a Dubai team is trying to get international volunteers to carry out projects locally. Here's that story. The program called Volunteer in Dominica is being pioneered by Dubai native Lola Lopez. Lopez is known as a dedicated volunteer who at the age of 15 began working for Meals on Wheels, a service in her homeland which delivers a daily hot meal for immobile old age pensioners. The Volunteer in Dominica program invites any charity, organization or cause eager to volunteer their time and give back to the community. According to its website, it will offer many opportunities for international volunteers to visit the island while putting their vacation to good use. The Volunteer in Dominica management is proposing to organize one to two week trips throughout the year for groups to take on projects here, such as building schools and those focused on marine preservation. Volunteer in Dominica has a board of directors. Its team is made up of Dubai natives, with the support of Dubai firm Range Developments, the investor in the Kampinski Hotel at Douglas B. Sustainable development means we all hold hands and grow together and ensure we make the life of future generations better, step by step. In this regard, we will shortly be formalizing one of our corporate social responsibility strategies under our Volunteer in Dominica program. When you have a moment, please take a look at www.volunteerindominica.com. We are seeking to encourage students and professionals from across the world to come to Dominica and contribute their time. Whether this is through teaching or physically building a structure, deserving projects will be jointly identified and executed. Range Developments has a building program for community centers. Ido Nechen Baptist, Channel 5 News. And the first anniversary of the passage of Tropical Storm Erica will be observed with a touch of royalty. This, as Miss Dominique and Miss JC's International 2016 hosts a special concert in remembrance of the widespread impact Tropical Storm Erica had on the country one year ago. The Carnival Queen says she felt compelled to bring Dominicans together to remind them that despite the effects of Tropical Storm Erica, there is still hope after the storm. It really just happened. I was just thinking one night and you know I said to myself I'm not hearing any buzz of, of anything else going on you know it's it's really a year since Erica so why aren't we doing anything so this is really just my little contribution I'm doing this in collaboration with my Queen's crew and a variety of, of, of local artists and the whole point is that well for me every time you know we hear rain in Dominico we get scared yesterday we had that that tropical wave alert and everybody was like oh my god I wonder what's going to happen so there's almost a fear being instilled because of the rain and so we wanted to just let people you know there is hope and there are brighter days ahead for Dominica the benefit concert will be held on the eve of the first anniversary of Tropical Storm Erica and while entry to the event is free Flosak is hoping to raise funds to assist at least one young person in need. We didn't want to ask people you know say okay pay $20 for this or so forth. I think it, it might have limited people's interest so we just decided that once you well to enter you make a donation whatever 
two dollars, five, ten, fifty, or hundred pounds. Whatever you have, you just make um, a donation. Whatever contributions we raise, we will look. Um, we will collaborate with the Ministry of Education to see, you know, which child is in need at the moment. Especially on the hills, you know, school is just opening, books are expensive, uniforms, tuition. So we are looking to sponsor a child or more than one based on the donations that we receive. The Queen herself will be putting on a performance on the night of the show, along with several others in the creative arts community. Um, the XCC band also reached out to us. They said, I, you know, I heard that you're doing this, you're doing this great thing. And because we know that, well, they were deeply affected, a lot of the band members lost family, they lost their homes and so forth. So I think it was, it, 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 it's important to them to be a part of, of something so great or something like this. And so we're happy to have them on board. Preceding the actual show, we're going to do a short sort of candlelight ceremony. It will, it will form part of our prayer, just to lift prayer for all the lives that were lost and so forth and just get people into that mood. And so after that, we'll be having a small collection. The event, dubbed Hope After the Rain, is carried for Friday, 26th August at 7.30 p.m. at the Arawa House of Culture. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. Meantime, being tested to new limits, that's how the chairman of uh, NEPO subcommittee is describing the impact of Tropical Storm Erica. Andrea Louis has more. The Food and General Supply Subcommittee is another one of the key branches under the National Emergency Planning Organization, NEPO. This subcommittee is responsible for storage and distribution of relief supplies in bulk to areas in need. Following the tropical storm, Dominica received large volumes of relief supplies. Chairman of the subcommittee says that, luckily, there was sufficient storage space on island to accommodate the incoming goods. One of the challenges that we have had over the years in terms of storage facilities is finding appropriate facilities for bulk warehousing of relief supplies. Because we do not, we have not really constructed any um, bulk storage facility for um, relief supplies, but what we do in the process when we meet as the Food and General Supply Subcommittee, we do an evaluation of what exists on island in terms of capacity. Uh, last year, for instance, and that is the time that we were most tested during Tropical Storm America. In my 15 years, that is the first time that we have had to deal with a disaster of that nature. The multi-purpose park house in Roseau and the other in Portsmouth played an integral role in storing goods as they were not yet furbished for use. However, these buildings are now operational, meaning there is now less space to house large quantities of relief supplies. Even prior to the disaster, with our planning activities, we, ident we identified a few places that we could, have, we could use as storage facilities. We got um, consent for the use of some of the sheds at the aid bank, and there were about two sheds that we used, shed number 19, shed number 18. But we did that, we began use of those facilities after we exhausted the use of facilities that Dexia was in control of. We are now in a situation right now with the park houses no longer available because we have just <laughs> commissioned the two park houses. Um, possibilities that we can revert, we can go back to Canefield, but um, the space that we had available to us is, is restricted, is limited right now. So we have less space for warehousing. The chairman notes that one of the areas of supply distribution that needs to be strengthened is accountability when the items reach the communities. At the level of the communities, we need to see strong organization where there is accountability, there is transparency. When we send the items, we know where the things are going. Because we had to develop forms, we had to develop check, um, checklists to ensure that what we um, dispatch to the communities would reach the communities. So that is an area for, for, for NEPO to, to, to address in terms of strength, strengthening that capacity on the ground. Thomas believes that more infrastructure should be set up in the various outer districts to help with the distribution of bulk goods. There are plans by the Ministry of uh, Justice under which um, disaster falls to establish what they call um, bases for, 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 for setting up containers in the communities. So 
what would happen once that is completed is that when we receive the, the bulk supplies from our warehouses, we can use the distribution points that they have in the communities to distribute to the communities. The subcommittee chairman says the organization's development of a food matrix was a significant help when it came to distribution. One of the things that we did, we developed what we call a food matrix. And um, we said that in the event of a disaster, if we were to feed about how many households, what is the minimum size ration that we would um, provide to a family? And we had done some work on it, and it still requires some fine-tuning, but that formed the basis of our distribution. Storage facilities at Windsor Park Stadium and Crazy Coconuts were among others used for storage last year. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. On to law enforcement now, where an improvement in the living conditions of police officers is on the cards. That's the word from Minister for National Security, Reuben Blackmore. We have just completed renovation to one of the barracks at Mombris for the SSU officers. We shall be starting sometime this next month to do a total and comprehensive rehabilitation of the main barracks in Mombris for, SS, for SS, SSU officers. Government by law has the responsibility to provide adequate accommodation for police officers. And for a number of years, um, St. Joseph has been without an inspector's quarter. Provision is being made in this year's budget for the construction of a new inspector's quarters in St. Joseph. The minister also reassured the public that they would be seeing increased police presence around the island with the graduation of just under 14 new recruits from the police training program next month. To ensure that we have adequate coverage, in September this year, 39 new recruits will be graduating from the training school in Mount Bruce. That will take us well over 500 police officers. And of course, we need to have men to do the job. We will continue as a ministry, as a government, to improve on our laws because we have to ensure that our laws are continually updated to suit the current time. The police are also expected to receive a donation of eight vehicles. In education, private institutions are expanding their syllabus in the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Exam Scape as more people are registering for that CXE certification. Idona John Baptist has more. There were 386 candidate sittings in the CAPE exams this year, an increase when compared to last year. The Caribbean Examinations Council offers three types of certification in CAPE. The first is the award of a certificate showing each CAPE unit completed. The second is the CAPE diploma. And the third is the CAPE associate degree. The Lead Institute and Business Training Center, BTC, offer CAPE courses on island. The 19-year-old BTC has been teaching CAPE courses since CXC launched the syllabus. And people are now more aware of what is CAPE. More, more people talk about CAPE as opposed to associate degree. So if you feel that you cannot handle, you're going to do it over three years, you can, you can only handle three subjects, then you handle three subjects. The examinations are one say. We are hoping that CXE make changes so that we have exams um, every January and every June so that it becomes more like the North American system. I really wish that they would make that change because there are people who fail the exams in June sitting and would really like the opportunity to write the exams within a few short months, perhaps in, in January, like they do with the CSEC. The overall pass rate also improved, that being 77% over last year's 74% pass rate. Students sat the CAPE in 30 subjects. Lead Institute students performed the best in CAPE for the fifth consecutive year. So we've grown significantly in terms of course offering. Uh, our goal ultimately is to provide the full suite of CXC CAPE associate degrees. Um, we're still a long shot away from, from that, but we're working on that and we're making some good strides. And CXC obviously is a regional examination body, it's internationally recognized, it is fully accredited. 
So as far as the program is concerned, um, it's the CXC program. We're not the ones granting the degree. We're just a teaching institution. The degree is granted by CXC. The CXC associate degree is awarded to students who obtained grade ones to five in seven CAPE units, including Caribbean studies and communication studies. We're talking about over 30,000 students wrote the CAPE exams. So it's an exam that is done and offered in about 20 of the Caribbean countries, CARICOM plus non-CARICOM countries. So we're talking about a degree with regional appeal, we're talking about a degree with international appeal. And so the students who do KIP are automatically and immediately regionally competitive because all of the other islands, students are matriculating and graduating with a KIP associate degree. Stedman, who agrees the CAPE certification and CXC associate degree are globally recognized, still encourages those who can manage to enroll at the Dominica State College. Now what I tell people to understand how this whole education thing works, when you are attempting a course like an associate degree, which is a step towards your first degree, find out which school will accept the, the, the credits before. So you do not want at the end of an associate degree to figure who will take it. So right now I'm looking for schools that will accept state college associate degree for my personal interest with my daughter. I may force her to do CAPE so I have that job to find out which schools will accept. So if a school agrees, okay, when she completes, we will take those credits as transfers. Then I will move ahead with it. It should not be the reverse. And that's a mistake a lot of parents make. Regional universities, tertiary institutions, and external educational institutions in Canada, USA, and the UK have accepted CSEC and CAPE certification based on the institution's requirements for a particular course of study. Edona John Baptist, Channel 5 News. You're watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, a fire official addresses questions over response time. Thanks for staying with us. Two residents of Citronair made homeless following an early morning fire on Wednesday. The wooden structure and all their belongings were destroyed in the early morning blaze. Fortunately, no one was injured. Leading fire officer Tony John Baptist has more. At about 0125 hours on Wednesday morning, officers of the Brutal Fire and Ambulance Services responded to a structural fire at Citronair. A one bedroom wooden house measuring 12 feet by 16 feet owned by owner Augustus was completely destroyed along with all of its contents. The building at the time was occupied by Miss Augustus and her nephew. There were no reported casualties. Investigation into the cause of the fire has still ongoing. And approximately 98 fires and 4,805 ambulance calls have been reported between January to July of this year. Leading Fire Officer Tony John Baptist told Channel 5 News most of the reports are from the Rosa District. Fires at Italia Restaurant and Citronair have led some to question the response time by the emergency workers. John Baptist responds to these concerns. Upon any call that is received from the control room, we respond within one minute of notification of a call. Although we are faced with challenges such as the time of day and traffic and even distance, mm -hmm. so this in itself may actually be one of the challenges that we face in response to response time. He has also appealed to road users to respect the signals from the emergency vehicles. To the other road users, we are asking you to respect the emergency vehicles mm -hmm. because one never can tell that it may be their building or maybe their family member that may warrant the need of the emergency services. John Baptist is soliciting the public's help in carrying out their duties. We need you, the public, to help us so that we, in turn, can help you. And um, normally what you find happening is, especially on fires, we have civilians often come in and try to interrupt the foundation, but we often ask that fire is, firefighting is a very dangerous profession, and we really want you, the public, to leave it to the person who are trained to deal with such hazards and that 
in as much as we, we welcome their assistance, but what they need to do is alert the fire department as soon as possible because oftentimes you find that persons would want to try to extinguish a fire when it is in the small stage while that is true but do not wait until the fire get out of control before you can alert the fire department retired nurse julie frampton has highlighted the role of staff nurses saying they are the backbone of the dominican healthcare system Addressing the Dominican Nurses Association Award ceremony, Nurse Frampton said she believes their knowledge, skills, work and commitment form the foundation of patient care. We, we don't see the doctors and the other support services 24-7 on a ward, but you always see a nurse on a ward. Yeah? And I found this quote that goes like, nurses are the hospitality of the hospital. <laughs> nurses are the hospitality of the hospital. Frampton explained that while nurses and nursing are celebrated all the time, this year the focus is on excellence in the profession. We celebrate nursing and nurses. We do that all the time. But we celebrate excellence in nursing. And as Pastor Randy alluded to in the scripture reading, I mean, excellence, it's not a question, you know, it's a habit. It's a practice that you just have to do it. And that is what we would like to see in our nursing practice in Dominica and our nursing profession. That's news. Kenny Williams is next with your sports highlights. In sports highlights, West Indies T20 captain Carlos Brathwaite says he has the support of the team behind him, including Darren Sami, and is looking forward to the Windies' two T20 matches against India on the weekend. Brathwaite recently succeeded Darren Sami as West Indies T20 skipper. He just told me, you know, congratulations. He heard it before he um, spoke to him and he just said congratulations. Um, you know, it's a big challenge, um, but once you prepare to accept that challenge, he gave me his blessing, um, as well as the senior guys, which I pretty much appreciated and which allowed me to ease into the role. But I haven't officially started as yet, but it's allowed me to transition a lot easier from just being told to the excitement to wanting to get on the field and lead the guys. He says the crowd at the Lauderdale Stadium during the Caribbean Premier League was favorable and is expecting positive things at the games. The U.S. have or has a lot of Caribbean supporters and I think a few Caribbean people that used to like cricket but probably don't follow it anymore would love to come out and enjoy some games in the U.S. Whether they'll be supporting West Indies or India, I don't know. But um, I think it's a very good, it would be a very good spectacle. Um, from all reports, the CPL had a fantastic ovation and it was well received. And I hope this is the start of big things. Uh, we're next door neighbors and the U.S. is a powerhouse. So, you know, let's see how it goes. We're testing the waters a bit. Hopefully it goes well and hopefully this is the first of many in the U.S. Captain of the West Indies T20 side says he was cautious in accepting the responsibility as captain and thinks leading the seniors will be manageable. Yes, there was hesitation. Um, you know, I want to contact my family and very close advisors before I took the job. Um, it is an honor. I will never say that I didn't want to take it, but obviously I had some questions and there were certain things that I asked of the selection panel um, before I took the job. Um, just basically to clarify, why they wanted me, what they expected of me, and to come, in, come into the role knowing my job, as opposed to just taking it really nearly and then finding out on the, on the way through the journey. I think a team like this um, will be pretty easy to lead from the point that the dress room is a fun place to be. So I don't think it's a case where I have to negotiate too many egos. Um, the guys enjoy each other's company. It's just a matter for me to go out there, do the things that I know I can do um, firstly as a player and then as a captain continue to mold the team that Darren has started to mold so efficiently and the, again the most important thing is getting victories for the West Indies as a unit obviously with a new leader things might change bit by bit just but for me to keep adjusting um, and then just finding ways for us as a team to continue to win. We have cases where some guys were captain and then play the next series under a different captain. We are professionals. We all know what we have to go out there and do. 
and it's just a matter for us to go out there and win games with West Indies. I hope that my leadership can influence that in some part, but even if it doesn't and we win the games, that's the most important thing. On the basketball scene, EH Charles crossover will be looking to edge one step closer to the final when they face top-seeded Fashion Line Falcons in Game 2 of the semi-final rounds in the best of three competition on Thursday. Crossover defeated Falcons in one of the matches of the regular season of the Flo DABA League and those teams should create a lot of excitement at Lindo Park. That match begins at 9 p.m. And due to the anticipated weather conditions, the games carded for Wednesday have been called off with the match between 767 Lady Ballers and Lady Panthers now scheduled for 7 at Lindo Park on Thursday. Back on the cricket scene. Northern Grassroots defeated Dominica 13 and under cricket team by 33 runs on Wednesday. Northern Grassroots took first to knock and scored 130 for 4. Majid Peltier took 1 for 19. Dominica replied with 98 for 9. Clemenson Leblanc scored 22. Meantime, in other matches from the Dominica 13 and under Goodwill series, Dominica beat Mabuya Valley by 92 runs, scoring 157 for 7 against their rivals, 64 all out. In another match, the national side defeated St. Lucia Sandals by 5 wickets. Dominica 88, Sandals 82. Majid Peltier picked up 3 for 19 and Jed Joseph 3 for 7. The national youth side got a 13-run win against John Eugene Academy. Jeremiah Joseph scored 48 to help Dominica reach 115. JEA resisted with a 103 for 5. And Dominica went down to St. Lucia Sandals Foundation by 14 runs. Sandals had first to knock and scored 132 for 6. Each house scored 63. Majid Peltier picked up 5 for 16. Dominica responded with 118 for 7. Mikael Revere scored 45. And more action from the TTWE Beach Football League continues on the weekend. However, if you missed their last performance, Ghetto Youth All-Stars had a 5-1 goal advantage over Party Boys. Keon Ernest and Marquis John Baptist added two apiece with an own goal complements a PB player. Johnny Joseph scored the lone goal for Party Boys. Meantime, in another match, Party Boys defeated Spartans 3-1. Jaheem Talbert converted twice and Johnny Joseph once for Party Boys. Corinne Rivier scored for Spartans. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Be sure to join us tomorrow. Flashback is coming up next. Welcome to another flashback segment. This segment takes us to a chilling incident that occurred in 1998 at Melville Hall, where passengers of a small aircraft en route to Dominica were met with tragedy when they plummeted into the hills of Marigot. The site of Sunday's fatal air crash was off limits to the public today as investigations into the cause of the accident got underway. More from Ken Richards. The remains of Flight 947 ended up here in the heights of Marigot from where the bodies of the passengers and the pilot were removed by rescue teams yesterday. The scattered parts of the airplane are expected to assist investigators piece together what happened to the fatal flight and its passengers. The broken up parts of the aircraft tell a chilling horror story about the last moments of its occupants. An investigation team was on site today to probe the mystery of the fallen aircraft. A sad story in our history. May their souls continue to rest in peace and we do hope their families and friends have found peace and healing. That's it for this week's flashback segment. I am Janik Delmar Samuel. See you next week. Well, scattered showers and thunderstorms expected for Thursday. Your weather forecast is next. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Corrette Joseph. We start off this evening by taking a look at some earlier satellite imagery. And of interest is this area of cloudiness with thunderstorm cells associated with a tropical wave, which tend to move over the Leeward Islands during the early hours of this morning. Visible satellite imagery showed 
more to layer clouds over Dominica throughout the course of today. Also, this area of cloudiness and thunderstorm cells just to the east and southeast of Dominica is currently moving in a west northwesterly direction. Radar image indicated the associated shower and thunderstorm activity of this tropical wave also currently moving in a west northwesterly direction. The island of Guadeloupe, just north of Dominica, recorded an inch of rainfall today. Conditions for tonight, cloudy to overcast at times with showers, periods of rain and possible thunderstorm activity. Tomorrow, cloudy with some scattered showers and the possibility for some thunderstorm activity. Persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides and falling rocks, you are advised to be vigilant and to exercise some caution. Sea conditions, moderate in open water with waves up to 7 feet. Taking a look at the extended forecast, again tomorrow Thursday, cloudy with scattered showers and the possibility for some thunderstorm activity. On Friday, partly cloudy skies with some scattered showers and on Saturday, fair to partly cloudy skies with a few scattered showers. And across the region tomorrow, weak unstable conditions generated by the tropical wave will result in mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers and possible thunderstorm activity. On the international scene, partly cloudy skies in New York and Caracas, some possible thunderstorm in Miami and London, and clear skies in Beijing. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.52 a.m. and set at 6.22 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and join us next time. Good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Tropical storm Gaston no longer a threat to Dominica, but we could see another tropical depression or storm in the next few days. A Dubai team seeking to tap the skills of international volunteers for projects in Dominica. And Miss Dominica spearheads a remembrance concert to mark Tropical Storm Erica's first anniversary. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris, and to our viewers around the world, thank you for watching.